Ah, hey guys, welcome back to another First Ascendant video. Today, we're taking a look at the preview of Hotfix 1.0.7. Greetings, descendants. This is the director of the First Ascendant, Min Seo Kuchu. Today, I'm here to share a preview about Hotfix 1.0.7. We're aiming to release Hotfix 1.0.7 on Tuesday, August 13th. We need additional time to verify some issues. In the meantime, I'd like to share some key updates in this Hotfix. First, we're adjusting the options for the infiltration operation on hard mode. The grappling hook disabled and jump disabled options will be removed from the selection list. Additionally, the select all option will no longer be deselected when changes are made after selecting all options. Moreover, we're planning further improvements for the infiltration operation on hard mode in season one. These include removing occupation tasks and focusing more on el eliminations. Also replacing the random combination of options with preset selections and expanding matchmaking parameters. That is awesome. I'm focusing more on eliminations. Now here, right? I think occupation tasks are decent. The rewards and whatnot just need to be focused. So while you're doing, say, an occupation task, you should get more elites or something to counteract it. Because then it just becomes a bland elimination hunt each mission, right? Next, let's talk about content adjustments. I'm going to add some extra time for you to choose restart option after completing intercept battles. This is huge. I think now it's only somewhere like 20 seconds or so. And then special operations and infiltration operations. For your preference, restart with squad and restart alone buttons will be provided huge. Additionally, we're making characters invincible when standing on hazardous areas after intercept are done, making use of the reconstructed device more convenient. Difficulty of Frostwalker mechanism will be adjusted so you can enjoy this void intercept battle through public matchmaking more easily. <laughs> Special operation ASK players will be moved automatically to the abort selection during interim review. Also, monsters HP will be reduced and more ammo will be dropped easily in void fusion reactors. Monster spawn intervals are shortened in Void Fragment Poison Attribute located at Echo Swamp Derlick Covert. Let me hold this one here, guys. When patch goes live, I'll have some side-by-side -side gameplay, see what happened. If this is the one I think it is, this is huge. So there's one um, where you got three spawn points at those little doorways. And I believe the Echo Swamp, and that's just an annoying one to do because it takes so long. So if that's the one, that's huge. Also addressing the issue where weapon proficiency is not gained for equipped weapons when using unique weapons, such as during Luna's stage presence. Lastly, we have usability improvements. We will enhance your farming experience with several improvements in Hotfix 1.0.7. We're adding a feature that allows you to quickly identify key information about your equipment by looking at icons in the inventory. You'll be able to see how many ultimate options an item has without opening its tooltip and identify the attributes and arcade types of reactors through icons. Additionally, we're speeding up the tooltip display to help you sort valuable items more efficiently. And one last thing, for previous patch notes, when we discuss plans to support build diversity, we noticed discussions in the community about whether socket types need to be assigned 11 times for each loadout page. Rest assured, we aim to support build diversity in a more user-friendly manner if you prefer to use the same socket type across loadout page 1, 2, or 3. The current setup will remain unchanged. Socket type assignments will only be required if you want different socket types for each loadout. That is huge. I say socket type assignments will only be required. What does that mean? Are you going to be able to do it free or is there going to be a new item that you can use it for? For one, right? And then two, that kind of get rid of their whole little marketing point of that whole streamlined progression grind. Don't get it twisted, guys, because all these creators are boosting stuff and some not even playing the game have a team to play the game for you. They're reaching max slots and all that way faster than I would say intended. It's a casual player, right? Over time, you probably don't even have an ultimate yet. So... You're coasting through the game while everyone else is maxing everything and then complaining about a lack of content. But I digress. The first Ascendant aims to be long time, long time beloved game. 
To achieve this, we're committed to improving the game in ways that resonate with you. We deeply appreciate everyone in our communities and will continue to strive to provide more enjoyable content. Thank you guys for watching our hot fix 1.0.7 preview. Let's leave a comment. I'll make one each time. And if you guys see me in the comments, you feel free to reply. Let me know you watched today's video. Huge. Looking forward to more. Hold on. Let me scroll up a little bit. They, they were saying something about the elimination missions and things of that nature. Removing occupation tasks and focusing more on elimination. I could see this in solo play, right? Like if there's objectives to hold in solo play, that could be annoying because you have to hold it. You're the only one there in the mission. That's the only thing there. But you don't want it to just be a brain dead thing of just doing eliminations. You want some variety and some you know, different mechanics within the missions to keep things fresh. Damn, what did I lost my train of thought here with what I wanted to comment? <laughs> Uh, okay, actually, huge. My problem with build diversity is the fact that we are in a meta of unique weapon. There's not much love for base weapon. Currently, there is no value in wasting crystallization on non-unique meta weapon. Regs, reverse. Revered or reversed? I think it's reversed fate. And what you call it? Instead of the one everyone's using that LMG. Forget that LMG. Forget the name of the LMG. Damn, I don't have my my thing anymore. So I can't even get a a good a good lengthy thing out. So hold on, here's my problem with build diversity is the fact that we are on. We are in. A meta of unique weapons. There's not much love for base weapons. Currently, there's no value in wasting resources on non-unique. On non-unique meta weapons like Greg Traverse Fate and the LMG. I can't remember the name of the LMG right now. Currently, there's no value in wasting resources on non-unique meta weapons like Greg Traverse Fate and the LMG. Some brainless person is going to misconstrue that bottom part. Let's clean that up a little bit. There's no value in wasting resources on non-unique weapons. No, nah, this should make sense. On non-unique meta weapons, then I include that one. That's what we're doing currently. I'm working on the Greg Reverse Fate. And just by hitting it a little bit with something, I still don't have an activator on it. We're cleaning these bosses easy now. So... There's no real value in using the other firearms when you can get a unique weapon and use resources there. People are complaining about drop protection. Eh. Yeah. I don't know about that. Most RNG fellas, because with the Valby stuff, I was able to get some of those things immediately. That I farmed for. I haven't started farming for the code yet. That's the last one we need. Alrighty, that is the video. Hope to see you guys on stream. Turn to their streams Monday through Fridays at twitch.tv as well as kick.com forward slash Tyrone Slayer. And remember to slay and conquer.